and welcome to Strange Speaks and in this BNF Bite Size Style video I'm going to be focusing on different age groups and what vaccines are recommended. Now I do have a vaccines video already and that highlights some background information, for example storage conditions with regards to vaccines, differences between live attenuated and inactivated vaccines, so if you're looking for that kind of information then do refer to that video. But this video is an update on what age groups and what vaccines are recommended in those different age groups. Now it's worth noting that with the COVID vaccine it then may that may be introduced um, within the immunization schedule and if that information does come out and is available I will update the uh, description box uh, below to make sure that that information is highlighted to you but this video is going to cover what the current immunization schedule is. So we're going to be looking at different age groups. So for example, eight weeks old, those who are 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old, look at sort of more child um, ch in childhood, then look at teenage years and later on in life. I will also cover some vaccines that are recommended in particular conditions as well. Now I have come up with a few mnemonics and hopefully they will help you too. So let's get started. So let's start off with neonates who are at risk only. So with these um, neonates, they would be offered the BCG vaccine and also a hepatitis B vaccine at birth, at four weeks and at one year. Now let's move on to those that are eight weeks old, 12 weeks old and 16 weeks old. So with these different age groups, I like to remember it using a combination of the number six and the letters P, M, R. And it's a, through a combination of these different numbers and letters that helps me remember what needs to be given in those different age groups and hopefully that will remind you and help you too. So let's start off with eight weeks. So with eight weeks, I remember six PMR. PMR should be an abbreviation that you're familiar with anyway, but in this instance, it means something completely different, but six PMR. So that six refers to diphtheria te with tetanus and pertussis, poliomyelitis, ooh, poliomyelitis, um, hepatitis B and influenza type B. That's our six. The P actually refers to pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate. Now this was offered to, at, at eight weeks, it was offered to um, babies at eight weeks old who were born on or before the 31st of December 2019. So going forward, um, Babies will not be offered this at eight weeks old, but it's worth still remembering now. The BNF lists it, so that's why I'm highlighting it. M refers to meningococcal group B, and R refers to rotavirus. Now moving on to 12 weeks. So this number, letter, mnemonic abbreviation that I remember is 6PR. So we're dropping the M in this instance, so 6PR. Six refers to those same six, so diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, poliomyelitis, hepatitis B and influenza type B. The P refers to the pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate, but this time it's being offered to those that were born on or after the 1st of January 2020. So going forward, any babies born will be offered this pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate at 12 weeks old. And then the R refers to the rotavirus. So that's the second dose of the rotavirus that's gonna be given. Whoa, 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 before we go any further, are you looking for clinical questions on every chapter of the BNF plus over-the-counter type scenarios? If you are and you want instant feedback on how you've done, then make sure to check out Clinical Quizzical. The link is in the description box below. It's suitable for M Farm students, trainee pharmacists, established pharmacists. This is to help you feel more confident in your clinical knowledge. So go and check out the link. And then at 16 weeks, if you remember 6 p.m. So 16 weeks, 6 p.m. So again, that six is that same six that was referred to in eight weeks and 12 weeks. P is for that pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate and that's a second dose that should have been given to those born on or before the 31st of December 2019. So again, it's not really going to be relevant to any babies born now, um, but again, still worth highlighting. And the M refers to that meningococcal group B vaccine and that's the second dose that will be given. 
Now let's move on to one-year-olds and either on or after the first birthday, the baby gets a present of a lot of vaccines. And the way that I remember this is through the mnemonic, Harry makes mummy pretty mad. Or if you want to get slightly topical and maybe slightly controversial, you could remember Harry makes Meghan pretty mad, but I'm going to stick to Harry makes mummy pretty mad. And in my mind, Harry is a one-year-old baby. So that's how I remember one-year-olds and that's how that's how I'm going to remember now um, what vaccines should be given through this mnemonic. So what do those letters actually stand for? Well, let's start off with the H and the M, Harry makes. So H refers to Haemophilus influenza type B with meningococcal group C. So that's where the H and the M come in. Harry makes mummy. So that M stands for MMR. So measles, mumps and rubella. Harry makes mummy pretty. That stands for our pneumonococcal polysaccharide conjugate. And this time it's going to be given regardless of date of birth. So Harry makes mummy pretty mad. That last M refers to our meningococcal group B vaccine. So those who are two to 11 years old are typically offered the influenza vaccine each year. And for those who are three years and four months old or soon after, um, we, we can remember four MMR. So that refers to, the four refers to DTP and poliomyelitis and MMR, MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. So four MMR for three years and four months old. So moving on to now the teenage years. So those who are 12 to 13 years old and are in England, Wales or Northern Ireland, they will be offered the HPV vaccine. The age range in Scotland is 11 to 13 years old. And the second dose is typically given six to 24 months after the first. Then in 13 to 15 year olds, they can be offered a very funky named vaccine, which is the meningococcals group A with C and W135 and Y vaccine. Who comes up with these names? Now, the only way that I can try and remember it is if you think of YMCA, well, this way, now think of A, C, W, Y. I mean, my hands, but this camera isn't big enough to even show you why properly. But if you can remember that ridiculous dance, hopefully that will help you remember what can be given to 13 to 15 year olds. It can also be offered in those under 25 years old who are going off to university and are at risk of meningococcal disease. Those that are 13 to 18 years old can also be offered diphtheria, tetanus and poliomyelitis and this can be given the same time as our funky ACWY as I'm going to call it vaccine. So now moving away from the teenage years and under 25 years old and moving towards those who are 50 and over, it's recommended that they have the seasonal influenza vaccine. For those over the age of 65, the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine is recommended. And those who are 70 years old, um, they're recommended to have the varicella zoster vaccine. So 70 years old is actually the oldest age that our, the immunization scale drill goes to. Um, so if you think of that's the oldest age and zoster is the last letter, well Z is the last letter of the alphabet and we have Z for zoster. That might be a way to try and remember. Oh, we've got the oldest age. Oh, we've got the last letter of the alphabet. So Z for zoster. That's how I'm going to remember 70 years old. Varicella zoster is what needs to be given. My brain works in very mysterious ways. And this is how I remember really random stuff. But hopefully it will help you too. So thinking more in terms of different states and conditions as opposed to specific age groups, so females of childbearing potential who have not had two doses of a rubella containing vaccine, it is recommended that they have the MMR vaccine. Pregnant women should be offered the DTP and um, poliomyelitis vaccine and they should be offered the influenza vaccine regardless of what stage of pregnancy they're at. And for adults who haven't been previously immunised with diphtheria, tetanus um, or poliomyelitis, they should have those three vaccines too. So there we have it. There's our different age groups, our categories, and what vaccinations are recommended within all of those. Now I know and I appreciate there have been some funky sounding mnemonics throughout this video, but I do hope that it has helped you. And if it has, please do give it a thumbs up. 
share, like, subscribe. Do also visit my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings.